What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the house with Yugi Tubing's most highly edited and thought provoking content. But seriously, Hidden Summoners has hit the market even worse than I could have possibly expected. The laughing stock of a release set this year. And for you guys trying to pick up these cards for cheap, good for you. I want to even order now. I think it'll continue to go down. But. Hey, you never know what kind of pushes and buyouts will happen in the market. Imagine the most expensive card in a set on release being $15 during pre-sales, not even the actual release yet. It is just madness. I'm not showing TCG player first because TCG players... Prices are always jokes on pre-sales comparatively to the market and how it's going to settle. So you see $20 over here for Prank Kids doo 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 But over on eBay, it's already $14. And my sponsors have it at $12.80 with 5% off. Imagine being a card shop and ripping open a set and seeing that your most expensive card for this set you've ordered a ton of in faith that it'll be a decent side set maybe they'll put in another brains pack promo like with shadows something to help sell the set and seeing that your highest card is is 12 freaking dollars oh man so everything's relatively affordable and cheap it evens out very quickly and like i said i want to order they actually told me that the closest thing to a short print or shorter print is manju and Nothing really does seem to be short printed so far for the European ratios, so that's very interesting to me. So you see on the second page, what people thought would be money would be eight to ten dollar cards. Goes and match and rivalry listed towards three dollars and two dollars to try to sell them faster because guess what? Everyone's gonna be packing playsets now. In terms of upward mobility in the future, Manju, Rivalry, and Goes and yeah, those are gonna be great cards to have. But like I said, immediately those cards' values are going to shrink. I, I actually noticed Secret Rare Gold Sark being the highest cost reprint by Tier Zero's thoughts. We'll have to see kind of how they predict the market compared to how Yu-Gi-Oh! Singles used to, because Yu-Gi-Oh! Singles had a really good radar for this sort of thing. We'll have to see how it settles out. I do feel like the reprints are mayhaps the strongest part of the set, and the reprints themselves are relatively weak. Prank Kids have the highest ceiling, I feel like, to move up, and sure, the my Yakushis, they're zombies, but they restrict themselves in how they work. A lot of people saying that the mill out FDK is their best potential, but you don't even need them for the Bone Tower mill out FDK, and we have an upcoming ban list that might just take care of Bone Tower preemptively, so Konami tends to like to stop things like deck outs and FDKs, and you can always actually just put things in your deck that help out against deck out like hmm there's there's this yugi tuber name like farfa like stuff that banishes from the field and gets sort of the problem that's happening to you yeah you definitely could find ways to put things in your deck and help yourself out so do consider that moving forward but this set is exactly where I thought it would be going. Actually, a little bit worse. Sorry to say for anybody who did order this to rip open, pre-sell, and sell cards out of. But looks like the vendors are kind of trying to put them out together. And like I said, I have an incentive to tell you guys to go buy from them. I just personally wait on this set. That's what I would do. Ooh, it's, it's comparable to Shadows in Valhalla, right? Ash Blossom is carrying the set, and even with a new card like Alistair that was super hyped, it kind of leveled out, and now it's $10 at a start from $28, and everything else is 5 and below, So uh, with way better reprints in the set overall that were needed. So, like, my opinion on it is, look at page 2, look at all these 50 cent to dollar cards, now look to this set. That's my direct example on why I would wait. It doesn't always feel good to be right. In this scenario, I don't feel great about it. I wish there was uh, stores getting money back on these sets instead of taking losses. They need to survive for us to continue to play the card game. And similarly, uh, we actually have Dark Saviors going way further down than I predicted. I actually said maybe it would go down towards 50, 45 lowest if I recall. And we actually see Engage heading towards 40 pre banless people are just shoving these out so it's up to you to decide will this card survive the ban list and in my opinion i think it will get hit it's been in too many top cut decks but the meta is also relatively diverse outside of them and konami might be focusing way too much on the ftk decks rather than this but 
You never know where it's going to fall. Ban list is pure speculation, and you see that speculation heavily dragging down Engage. Also to note, we only have one more competitive event this year with Pasadena, so you're going to see prices naturally curve off. We're back to another off-season, and I wanted to discuss how that might actually affect the current sets. We remember... We remember in years past where we had Ash Blossom fall down from $80 all the way to $40 just in anticipation of reprints that ended up not happening very quickly for and then the shorter prints. So uh, where do we actually see certain sets going outside of, you know, the side sets? Where do we see, say, Soul Fusion going during this offseason? Are people going to be stable? It's too soon to get reprinted. We're, we're fine. Or are you going to see, like, prices dip naturally during the offseason? season without play or maybe people investing in stuff like our dangerous neck here i think thunder dragons will kind of slowly fall during the off season and certain cards like wow tighten all the way down to nine dollars it's pretty ridiculous but a main highlight i actually wanted to talk about similar to ash is ghost bell and haunted mansion right now it's up at one of its highest points ever 61 during this kind of break what's gonna happen to ghost bell Will people have learned from history and they'll just keep her and not try to sell her? Or do people need to make that overhead? You're going to see these top uh, rated listers continue to go ahead and post it a little lower and a little lower and start edging each other out and see Ghost Bell over time just drop. What's going to happen during this offseason? We'll see what really happens. And I predict history repeats itself typically and that people will start offloading them feeling like ah oh, this is $60 I'm not using it for two to three months you know that sort of thing so it should be interesting to see uh nightmare unicorn I feel like will be more stable probably go back towards 30 and permanence is the big one to watch already falling back from that $90 hype but with only a few listings really getting away from that price though so We'll definitely have to see how the offseason carries. And speaking of offseason, get rid of these right now. Is sold, will be printed super rare. And it brings up an interesting conversation for the future. But just immediately people were telling me, oh, it's too soon to get rid of these. It's not reprinted till December, yada, yada. And my answer is it was going to continue to go downwards from that $28 mark already at 19. And with that only one big of it and then regionals around, this is going to continue to dwindle, especially with an upcoming ban list that might hit pieces of the engine but if pieces of the engine are hit this becomes more important than ever let's say armageddon gets put to one instead of band or greffer gets put to one instead of band who becomes all more important overall vision hero vion is actually my answer for that because this will actually get you to malicious should malicious not be hit if malicious is hit this engine suffers so terribly so we'll have to keep an eye on this again bandless speculation but if malicious remains unhidden they go for armageddon greffer the kind of starter cards instead of the extender vion becomes extremely important to go into isold isold can then get you your one of armageddon knight or greffer if that's how they leave it and you can continue your combos off like that but you'll have to bet they're gonna go for cannon soldier the pk warrior engine is still very strong right now and should it survive it'll be amazing but again you're fighting all this on will they miss malicious or hit malicious so let me know in the comment section down below do you think konami will hone in on that or are they going to go for the starter cards will malicious find its way back onto the f and l list thanks to link summoning if not i predict this will easily double in price should other things get hit and this engine remain unhit the pk hero engine very strong even today I just wanted to review the Megatons also with that off-season thought. There's that gold set coming up that may or may not have cards, and I feel like it's one of the places, I know I scream this from the rooftops all the time, that Borload and Firewall are going to finally receive their altar arts, which will leave Saryuja and evenly match with a majority of that Yu-Gi-Oh! 10 money. So I would honestly be getting my Saryujas right now because whenever there's disparity in a set, something else tends to bump up a little from it. And Saryuja is pretty good. Saryuja Turbo being a deck in and of itself, I might consider having my Saryuja copies now rather than later. And evenly matched, of course, already being the top at the king of the set. Uh, Konami may be done selling it, so it might be up for ban list, but I honestly think it ends up in enough side decks and not main decks that it could avoid that hit konami could see that as part of the answer to the u link and just leave it alone so i know we did talk a lot about banlist we talked a lot about the sets and off season 
even future reprints. But what do you guys think of everything happening to the market? It does seem that there's coolant, but it's not due to the offseason currently. It's more due to the banlist fears and speculation. And some other things seem to be... Like, nobody thinks I... I would hope that Infinite Impermanence is going to get hit. Like, they're not going to do that. They have to sell future products such as next year's Megatons and Battles of Legends. So, this is a pretty balanced card overall as it is. It could just use a reprint. But you do see it naturally having lower listings by independent sellers. What do you guys think is happening? Is this off-season 2.0? Uh, I do think there's always kind of a coolant, and then we hit February, that road to Nationals, and things really spike up. So, what are you going to go for during the offseason? How do you feel about the offseason, and what do you think about this upcoming ban list also driving fears and mixture with that? I'm pretty excited to see how the market turns out. I'm glad that you guys get cheaper cards, but I'm also upset for the stores, and overall wrapping everything up, it's an interesting market watch, isn't it? The thing's just going everywhere, and low prices, good for the players. Definitely bad for stores on Hidden Summoners, by far. This is not the sign of a successful product.